Oh my word, it is freezing today. Holy cow. Um, Berna, Lisa, ah, I feel for you. I feel like I've gone to Alaska to visit. But at some day, yeah. Uh, out walking the dogs, rain or shine. I'm like the postman, right? And Stitch is hiding under my car. He doesn't want to come out, he's cold. He, he was crying because I had his window closed and he wanted to come out for the walk, so I let him out. Now he's hiding. <laughs> Maybe he'll join us later. So, I got a good uh, show for you today. We're gonna update you on the Murdoch Family Gardeners. Stay tuned. Hey, good morning everybody. Crafting Journey here, that journey chick on Instagram, and on my second YouTube channel, The Leftovers. And the link to that is down in the description. And here's my co-host, Stitch. I'm just, I'm actually filming today on my iPad. Same microphone seems to work fine with the iPad. Seemed to work fine in this exact same program, OBS, when I stream my game at night. Um, and when I'm working in StreamYard, works fine. I don't know why. It just doesn't like my show, Crafting and Crime Daily. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. I'll figure it out. I had one show where I figured it out. But anyway, Stitch is cold. I'm cold. This, where I'm filming here, it, this is a converted garage. It was converted into my craft room now. Half of it is my reselling business. So it's pretty full of stuff, but I'm cold. And I do have like a little space heater here. It looks like a fireplace, it's super cute. Some of my older subscribers will remember that. It used to be in my background. Um, I gotta find a, an extension cord <laughs> to get it to work. So yeah, I, go, I got up this morning. You'll get to see this footage at the end. If you watch to the end, you'll see the animals. You'll see the, <laughs> the dogs. Stitch was crying, he wanted to go out. He was very upset with me last night because I closed his window. And he's like, why are you closing my window? He didn't know it was freezing outside. So this morning he's like meowing to go out with us. And um, I let him out. First of all, he hid under the car and then he uh, cried to get back in the house. <laughs> so he's like, oh, I'm not having this 20 degree weather. It's like, Ow, ah. I just bit my tongue. That hurt. Oh, anyway. So I was trying to see this morning, how many different colors can I put on today? <laughs> Did it work? Leopard print, yarn, yeah, sweater. Because I was sitting here and it was really cold. So I have my diamond painting back out. Yesterday, I worked on my miniatures until my hands cramped up. Yeah. And then I couldn't work on any anymore. Oh, darn, <laughs> so I put them away. I have something to show you before we get into the crime thing for my diamond painting subscribers. I've got a, a, my monthly unboxing. I am an affiliate with Diamond Painting Drills and every month they put out a, uh, a little palette of different specialized drills, Aurora Borealis drills. Those are um, acrylic diamonds that you place on the canvas with a uh, iridescent coating that makes them look really cool on the outside. So I will show you what this month's are. And they come in, there's 400 and some different colors that these could possibly be. And then you throw in some metallic stuff. It's really cool. So uh, this is the packaging slip. Also, when you order now, you get all 400 and some colors, a little chart, and it'll show you what diamond painting drills has in their stock and whether it comes in square or round. And then you can place your orders with them. So, and every month you get these really cool stickers from the owner, Alyssa. This month it's got little fall leaves and I'll try to put an up close photo here so you can see. And then um, I will show you what we got this month. I always order these, um, 
Alyssa, the owner, puts these together. And you can order these in the jars, which is how I order them. Or you can order them in packages. If you order them in jars, you're going to get about 600 diamonds per jar. If you order them in packages, it's going to cost you a little bit more. But you're going to get a packet that has about 2,000 diamonds in it. Depending on the project that you're working on, um, I like to have these samples here so when I'm starting a painting I can look at the samples and see if there's something I want to add into my painting and if I think I'm going to need more than what I have in the sample then I'll just order them. Okay I'm assuming these are fall colors and I am correct. All right let's take a look. I'm going to toss that box. Beautiful oranges, browns, uh, again I'll show you that up close. We've got 33, 40, 41, 38, 24, 967, which are typically in the fall, you'll see 740, 741. These are like the, the pumpkin oranges. Um, these are more of like a pale orange. And uh, then you've got some different browns in here. Almost like a brown orange. Very pretty, very, very pretty. 918, 920, 921, 3859, 435, 430, 434, 35, 36, and 37. Okay, there you go. <laughs> if you're working on an autumn painting, you may have all of these colors in it. Plus, uh, if you were a member last year of my channel, you probably, you may have ordered the, the 741 family, which are the oranges that go with this. So anyway. That's what it is the month. So the link to this company is down in the description. If you follow that link to the Diamond Painting Drills site and you place an order, I make a small commission, which is what I use to buy these every month. Why not, right? Because I'm fun employed. Okay. And my sister always takes the sticker. Or I give it to her. She didn't take it. Um, all right, so I'm going to dive away. Oh my gosh, we have so much to get to. And for my other subscribers who maybe you're not a diamond painter or maybe you're just, maybe you do some other crafts, uh, I have lots of content for you too. But let's get to the crime part of the show. Yeah. So George Wagner, let's, oh man, finally the prosecution rested their case yesterday. George Wagner, the fourth, is accused of murdering eight members of the Roden family. And he's facing the death penalty here, guys. Um, yeah, this is an Ohio case. This is like in the back hills of Ohio, the foothills of Ohio. Um, so the prosecution rested today. There is no court. Happy Veterans Day. It's Veterans Day. I come from a long line of veterans. My grandpa was in the Navy. My father was in the Army career officers, all of them. And my son was in the Air Force, all three career. And my grandsons, both Kyle and Kaleo, were supposed to go into the Air Force. And for weird circumstances, neither of them did. Now they're both in college. Um, that's why to each his own, but no more military uh, traditions in this family, apparently. So happy Veterans Day, you know, thank you for your service. If you are still in the military out there and you're one of my subscribers or you're married to someone that is in the military, um, tell them we, that I certainly do. Thank you for your service. Yep. Um, my father's, you know, passing was related to Agent Orange from Vietnam. So, you know, he ended up with so many uh, disease processes in his body that towards the end he just overwhelmed him but um yeah so 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 sad anyway so uh, back to the Wagner case they put on a the defense put on out of order because they had this expert that I guess needed to get back home a crime scene expert reconstruction, blood splatter. He, you know, been doing this for 30 years and he was hired by the defense to make a case that the, basically that all these murders were committed by Jake <laughs> and, and no one else. Um, and that, yeah, that only one person committed the crimes. So he 
mainly focused on the first crime scene because there were, as you may recall, there were one, two, three, four different crime scenes here um, involving these eight people. So the people at the first crime scene were Chris Sr. and his brother, Gary. Um, so this reconstruction expert, um, you know, talked about everything that he reviewed and what he found and basically was trying to, uh, it was his opinion that the body of Chris was shot on the patio or at or near the door that goes from the tra trailer out to the patio. So somewhere in that vicinity. And then the bodies of him and his brother were dragged from where they were shot down the hallway and they were put into their beds, covered up with comforters. So, you know, and this is all based on the marks of the blood. And, but the, it, you know, so the prosecution gets up there on cross-examination and points out, you don't know the names of these victims, do you? No, not really. <laughs> didn't know the names of the other victims. Didn't know how many times the other victims were shot. Um, just seemed to be focusing on this one crime scene. Completely ignored in his report that he issued the fact that two bloody footprints were found at this crime scene that were different shoe sizes. Hello? <laughs> um, yeah. So, weird. Anyway. So after he finished his testimony, then uh, the state continued to put on the wiretapping stuff. And um, I told you guys I would listen to it. I didn't get a chance yesterday. Why not? What was I doing? Oh, I was, <laughs> I released a, uh, uh, I did, I went to a garage sale, released a video on my other channel. So take a look at that. But um, I plan to look, cause I'm not going anywhere in this weather. I plan to look at those or listen to that wiretapping this weekend. My understanding it is is very difficult to hear from, from the few that I have heard, very difficult to hear. But I'm going to try to listen and see what, if there's anything, any takeaways I can bring back to you as far as, uh, and I got to tell you, I don't, I don't know that the prosecution has put on the best case against George. Um, it just depends on whether the jury is going to believe that Jake and his mother are credible. Because that's really what they're, you know, that they're hanging their hat on his brother Jake's testimony because the rest of the case is very circumstantial. So tomorrow, no, not tomorrow, Saturday, Monday, the uh, defense will be arguing a motion for a directed verdict. Um, and that's always comes at the end of a prosecution's case. It's a routine motion, very rarely granted. And it just is telling, it's asking the court, hey, assuming the, you know, in the light most favorable to the prosecution, uh, they didn't make a case that my, sorry, dryer was going, oh, God, I hope that wasn't too loud. Sorry. Um, in the light most favorable to the prosecution, they didn't put on a case against, the, there's not enough evidence to support that my, that a jury could find my client guilty. And of course the judge is going to say, eh, yeah, but if they believe Jake, they're going to find him guilty. And so <laughs> that'll, that'll go forward. Uh, and the defense can put on the rest of their case. I don't think we're going to hear from George. I don't think he's going to take the stand. I just, I don't see that happening. Uh, I think were he my client, I'd say, hey, no, probably not a good idea. But, you know, that's completely up to him. So, uh, just a little snippet. You know, I thought we had put to bed the Parkland shooter case. Apparently not. Some uh, interesting news out of that case. As you recall, Nicholas Cruz went on trial for the Parkland shooting, and he was sentenced to 34 consecutive life sentences. Um, you know, the jury came back, denied the death penalty, you know, and said, no, we're not going to impose the death penalty. Um, so the judge entered um, her ruling, her convictions um, for the consecutive life sentences. So one of the defense lawyers, Tamar Curtis, is now under investigation by the Florida Bar Association. So, you know, the, the legal profession is very self-regulated and um, someone 
reported her to the bar. She, and she you, as you may recall, there's because it was on every person that ever covered this case, um, talked about it where she was sitting next to Nicholas Cruz. The judge was not in the courtroom. The jury was not in the courtroom. And uh, she probably thought the cameras were off. I don't know. But she, she's talking to her co-counsel, sitting next to Nicholas Cruz, and she shoots a bird. She goes like this, you know, and they're laughing, and ha-ha, Nicholas looks at the camera. He's laughing. Um, and... The judge commented about it because, you know, apparently it, someone on YouTube picked it up, picked, you know, it was probably streamed on, you know, on one of the channels, uh, either long crime or, but someone picked it up at that particular moment in time where she shoots the bird and then it gets blown out of proportion and the bar, you know, if it's reported to the bar, they're required to investigate, but really only about 25% of investigations actually go anywhere. Um, and this, you know, because it occurred outside the presence of the jury and it occurred outside the presence of the judge, and I'm sure she did not in, intend any disrespect to any of the victims. Uh, I think it just, it, ah, my phone, who's calling me? Goddard, Kansas, spam risk. Now, I usually have this turned off the volume, but I'm expecting a call from the unemployment office. And uh, so I had to turn my volume back on. Now, they're not working today. I know that. But on the off chance, because they called me yesterday and said, we're going to call you back within 48 hours. Um, and I'm thinking, no, you're not. <laughs> Tomorrow. But just because I will forget to turn it back on for Monday, uh, I, it's on. It's going to annoy me all weekend, I'm sure. Um, so that's what's happening. I, I very, I, I think, I, p I feel pretty strongly that this is not going to go anywhere. But um, the judge needs to watch out. She might get investigated too. Just because she was, you know, she didn't shut down what happened when the victims started uh, attacking the defense attorneys. And, you know, so that whole thing. Anyway. Let's talk about something we haven't talked about in a week or so. The Murdoch family murder saga. So there is so much going on surrounding this man, Alex, Alec Murdoch. 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 Well, yeah, you have to say it a certain way because this, this, this whole drama is straight out of... A novel uh, by, oh my God, what's his name? Yeah, I can't think of it now. Anyway, so um, there's been, there. there's this huge web of criminality associated with Alec Murdoch going on in South Carolina. There's the federal case against Russell Lafleet, Lafleet, Russell Lafitte, he's the former president of the PNC, PMP, the PMC, P, you know, the PNC State Bank, um, and he is accused of uh, wire fraud and corruption. Apparently, taking he was set up by the lawyers at this PMP, the law firm that. At, including Alec Murdoch, that, but mainly Alec Murdoch, where he would be set up as trustee for some of the clients of PMPED, and uh, he would get the settlement money, and he would and then he would use that money for his own benefit or the other lawyer's benefits. This all this is coming out now, because everyone thought initially this is just Russell Lafitte and Alec Murdoch and another guy named Corey Fleming who so far the only person that's been named in the federal case is Russell Lafitte. They haven't named Alec. They haven't named Corey Fleming. Corey Fleming is the uh, attorney friend of Alec Murdoch who would take, he would represent a lot of these victims. And it, it's just crazy. So checks would get written. Instead of getting written to the victims, they would get written to the trustee. Russell Lafitte of this 
at this bank and the victims would ask for the money and get some of the money and then he was using settlement funds to pay back other victims it, it just gets crazy so apparently it came out that there's a secret recording uh, uh, between Russell Lafitte and other people at PMPED law firm, not Alec Murdoch, but other people, instructing him on writing a $680,000 check and how to write this check to other victims and lawyers and to avoid any uh, impropriety. So the question is, are, are the feds going to bring in other people in the in the federal case there's all these other cases going on surrounding this you know alec murdoch is charged with the murder of his wife and son uh, maggie was 52 years old paul paul murdoch was 22 years old and then paul what this was a few days before he was supposed to appear at a hearing where he had been charged with a drunken um what do you call it driving while intoxicated on this boat that ended up crashing into this bridge, ejecting one of the passengers who they found dead the next day. Uh, so there's the murders of Maggie and Paul. Then there's the lawsuit by the Beach family the one, the name of the victim from the boat crash was Mallory Beach. The Beach family had sued Alex and has sued the convenience store where Paul and some of the other people bought, well, mainly Paul. Paul Paul bought liquor at this convenience store using his older brother Buster Murdoch's license, uh, driver's license. And then they go and they all drink from you know, what he bought. And then he and another guy go to this bar later on. And then they go to this house party. And so everybody gets sued. So most people have settled, except for Alec, who's now in jail for the murders of his wife and son and other stuff. I'll, I'll tell you that in a second. Um, <laughs> craziness, just craziness. So there's this wrongful death lawsuit. Um, and that's there's craziness going on in that lawsuit and then alex murdoch is charged in connection with that boat crash with obstruction of justice now more on that development coming up here in a second um also he's you know been charged with a numerous numerous counts of financial crimes where he was representing victims and they never got their money because it was going to Russell Lafitte, you know, from the federal case. <sighs> and the victims never got, never saw a dime of some of that money. Um, Alex got some of the money, Russell got some of the money, and now we're going to find out other people got some of the money. Okay. Then, uh, then there was a shooting on Labor Day where Alex is charged with conspiracy with his buddy Eddie Smith to commit this insurance scam where they would set it up to look like he was trying to kill himself and $10,000 policy would be transferred to his son Buster I don't know it just it went awry and yeah it didn't go as planned and so now he's charged with that um, also, and there's a possible drug smuggling connection between Alex and some drug smugglers out of South Carolina. Just some crazy craziness. So what? So what's new in this case? So the recording that we now know exists out there between Russell Lafitte and someone at PMPED law firm where Alex Murdoch processed the law. Then HBO Max made a three-part documentary that started on November 5th last week. It is called Low Country, and it's about this Murdoch saga, so to speak. And it contained footage of from the hospital. Now, everybody knew this footage was out there, but no one had ever seen this footage. Because first of all, it's very difficult to get footage out of a hospital because of HIPAA. 
you know, privacy concerns. And the footage shows Paul Murdoch, his father, Alec, and Alec's father, a former solicitor, you know, which is um, equivalent to a district attorney in other parts of the country. Um, so former solicitor, three generations of the Murdochs. And this is immediately following the boat crash where Paul was intoxicated. He was taken to the hospital, you know, for because this was, I guess, one heck of a crash. So he's taken to the hospital and his father and grandfather show up. And now his father's charge was obstruction of justice related to that case. So it's, it's thought that he was trying to get the police officers to accuse someone else of driving this boat so that Paul wouldn't have to take responsibility. That didn't work. Paul gets charged with uh, driving while intoxicated and the murder of Maggie Beach, um, Mallory Beach she was ejected from the boat this it's a tangled web guys tangled web so this is all covered in this hbo documentary and pursuant to the freedom of information act many 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 people have tried to get this footage just to prove the obstruction of justice that was taking place and um, and that you know Alec was there at that hospital, and his his father was there too. Um, just saying. So how did HBO Max get this footage? This p people have been fighting to get this footage for a long time, and it was been denied. No one could get this footage. So. It was thought initially that it had been leaked by the attorney for the convenience store who has not settled the lawsuit. The um, Everyone else has except for Alex and the convenience store. So the convenience store, they thought, oh, it must have been leaked by them. Well, lo and behold, an attorney, um, McCullough, he comes forward. He represents one of the other boat crash victims. And he writes a letter to the judge saying, listen, it was me. I inadvertently, my office inadvertently released the footage to HBO Max. What? How is that even possible? Um, yeah. So he said he thought the tape had already been released. No, you, you know it hasn't been released. Everyone's wanted it. No one has ever been able to get it. And you thought it had already been released. You guys have been fighting over this for years. Um, and how much did you make? How much did HBO Max pay your law firm to get this footage? So that remains to be seen. Very interesting. But I listened to a reporter who, now I haven't watched this Low Country. I didn't even know that, that it existed. And I plan to watch it because I do have HBO Max because I needed to watch House of Dragons, of course. Um, and anyway... There's some other stuff that has come out um, through this documentary is questions regarding the alibi that Alec Murdoch has for the murders of his wife and son. So in June of 2021, his two, Alec's two brothers go on Good Morning America and they say that Alex took his father to the hospital. Alex's father's passed, he actually passed away uh, days after the murder of Paul and Maggie um, from cancer. So his two brothers go on Good Morning America and say, no, Paul was, he, he couldn't have done this. He was taking my father to the hospital. Then um, in a podcast interview in May of 2022, John Marvin, which is one of these same two brothers, John Marvin comes out and says, no, I was the one that took him to the hospital. It wasn't Paul. Now, how did you make that mistake? First it was Paul, now it's you. I don't know. Um, then Jim Griffin, who is representing, one of the two lawyers representing Alec Murdoch, appeared on the HBO Max documentary with a timeline saying that Alex left work, arrived home about six o'clock that night, um, that the three people from the family, Paul, Maggie, and um, 
Alec had dinner that night and he fell asleep on the couch and he woke up about 9 p.m. Okay. Well, the state has video footage from inside the home showing Paul, Maggie, and Alec awake at 8.44 in the house together. Well, Alex claims that he woke up from his nap on the couch and wanted to go check on his mom. So, um, was he aware that his brother had taken his father to the hospital? I don't know. Anyway, he says, I'm going to go check on my mom. Let me call. You know, he, he couldn't find Maggie or Paul. So he tries to call their cell phones and they don't answer. So he just leaves and he goes to his mother's house. And uh, so allegedly, according to his defense attorney, from 9.03 to 9.21, he was on his cell phone. And then he, um, he actually left his home at 9.06 p.m. He arrives at 9.21 p.m. He calls the nursing assistant that is taking care of his mother to let him in. Then he sits with his mother and watches a game show. Then he leaves at 941. And then we know that there was a 911 call placed at 1007 that he had found the bodies of Maggie and Paul. So what happened to driving his father to the hospital? Okay. It's strange alibis, strange... I don't know what's going to happen to this whole thing. It's just so crazy. But if you get an opportunity, let's watch the HBO Max documentary. It looks really interesting, doesn't it? Okay, guys, that is the show for the day. I hope you enjoyed the content. I know Stitch did. Um, did you enjoy it, Stitch? He's asleep. There was these little, like, um, leaves in his bag because, you know, it's fall. And he want, he picked them out of his bed he would lay down <laughs> very cute all right guys um i will be uh, going live at 11 a.m sunday it's my usual sunday live um i've got some interesting footage to show you from a castle in wichita yeah we have a castle so if you want to see that come to the live um and just you know show up and chit chat with me that'll be uh central time on sunday and uh, Monday, I want to go to the bins, the outlets, the Goodwill outlets for my business. So I don't know if there'll be a show Monday. We'll see. Because the courts are closed today. Nobody's nobody's having courts. Oh, the other case I, I meant to tell you, the, um, the stabbing case where you, you heard the 911 call. There was no court there yesterday because that case is in Florida. And that, as we know, they were devastated by another hurricane. And uh, the, that courthouse, even though it was on the west coast of florida in hillsborough county um they did get they were in the path of that hurricane i think by the time it gets over to them it's probably a tropical storm um before it heads up the coast but nonetheless uh, the courthouse was closed so no court yesterday today's a holiday monday they uh there was some discussion uh, between the judge and the the attorneys that the state would be resting their case after several witnesses on Monday. Anticipated. So, I will see you back on Tuesday for another episode of Corrupting and Crime Daily. So, take care, everybody. Bye. All right, guys. Come on. Let's go.